Every morning I come out here, I always start my day with Bejigo Asema. I always offer my tobacco, but I also smudge every day. I smudge my projects, I smudge my, mach my machines, myself, before I start, just to have those good vibes, because I know that my feelings, they go into my work. So if you're having those, those, those bad feelings, those feelings are going into what you're making, and I don't want to pass those on to other people. If I'm having a bad day or if I'm not, if I'm not feeling 100%, I'm not working today. Buju, chimayinga nindigo. Herb fine days yagi nashimo. Makwa nindu dem. Ashkiba kaning nindanum gum. I said that my name is Chimayinga, which is Big Wolf in Ojibwe. Um, in English, my name is Herb Fine Day. We are in uh, my studio, which is Round Lake Traditions, on my property. For a lot of Ojibwe art, Right now, my bread and butter, what I, what I specialize in is my applique designs. I do a lot of vests, um, velvet vests like the one I'm wearing right now. Um, <clears throat> and I also do a lot of powwow dance regalia. And uh, when I say powwow dance regalia, it, you can run the gamut on every kind of um, dance category there is that I specialize in. I have customers in Canada, I have customers all over the US. You know, I got, I've sent stuff to Washington, Maine, Florida, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, and uh, I enjoy seeing that. And actually, um, I went to a few powwows this summer, and when I was dancing at these powwows and watching people dance and looking at their, um, some of the garments that they're wearing, I'm thinking, there's a lot of my work out here. Seeing that is fulfilling, especially knowing that um, you know, I made a, I had a little piece of them getting back out into that dance arena or dancing again. So, uh, and that's a huge reason why I do this. In the powwow world, sometimes we weren't able to purchase a, an actual embroidery machine. So we taught ourselves how to use these regular home-based sewing machines on the zigzag stitch of how to make these, these intricate patterns. So applique is a type of, we'll say mixed media art that is put on the clothing. And uh, through that process, we're just layering pieces of color on top of color. And, and we're making those fine lines with that zigzag applique process. I guess if we go back and think about being Ojibwe and Anishinaabe, you know, we always made do with what we had. When I'm sketching out, and I'll, I'll actually draw it on what is called um, heat and bond. And I'll put it on that heat and bond paper. And then I cut that heat and bond out and I, I iron that onto fabric. And then I'll cut those designs out by hand. I have templates or, or uh, stuff to cut out my vest, so I'll cut out the vest and I'll heat and bond everything onto that vest and then I hand sew it after that. When I was growing up, working with uh, my grandmother, and my grandmother was, uh, she was a first language speaker, uh, and so was my grandfather. So in their household, uh, daily, all you heard was Ojibwe. And what was important to them is, is it passing on the knowledge that they carried on to their young ones. Um, and what they would say is that, hey, this knowledge that I hold, it's not mine. So it's the same with you. When you learn how to do something, it's not yours. So make sure that you pass it on so that it lives on. Throughout those times, you know, it, it's something that's, I don't want to say it was all self-taught, but I learned a lot from my teachers who are my mother, father, and uh, my grandparents. And getting to that point now to where I pass a lot of that knowledge on. So uh, I enjoy doing it here at Round Lake Traditions. I don't uh, pin nothing down and I don't use no heat and bond or, or spray or nothing, so we just hold it by hand. Growing up in, with my mother, um, she did a lot of sewing and she sewed for our family out of necessity. You know, she helped uh, make a lot of our clothing, helped make our, even our backpacks for going to school when I was growing up. Um, we, didn't, we didn't come from a lot of money, but we made do with what we had. Ready? There was always a sewing machine around. I was one of those people who, I could pick up what you were doing by just watching you. You know, same with watching my grandparents with their beadwork and uh, their leather work. 
I was a law enforcement officer. I was actually the chief of police of the Fond du Lac Reservation um, before I started Round Lake Traditions. I had a certain mindset all the time. Um, while I was wearing that uniform or while I was in my law enforcement mode, and I would come home and um, I actually needed, you know, probably 20 to 30 minutes to just decompress and get back to my role as an Anishinaabe male or a father figure. Once I made that transition and then I was able to relax and, and then uh, my creative stuff would start flowing again and uh, kind of going back and forth and talking with my wife of, of what I wanted to do with, with my work as an artist. I would hesitate and I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it, you know, and I would just wait and I would put it off. And then finally one morning I woke up and I just said, you know, I'm gonna do this 100% full time. And this was in um, May of 2019, I'd made that decision. Um, I retired in July of 2019. And I haven't looked back since that day. Almost 100% of the people that come to me want this legacy piece that they've been looking for for a long time. And they approach me with that, and uh, I finally make something for them. And, and um, I've had people come into my studio, and I've showed it to them, or they've uh, uh, once I mail it to them, and I say, "Hey, can you sit, can you take a video and send it? Send me that video." Seeing their elation on their face when they're actually taking that garment out of the box and looking at it, it's actually brought in tears to people's eyes when they get that piece. That's why I do what I do. That's the easiest part. That's what brings me joy of doing this. Herb tells people his creations are not his, but are the creator's. He won't work on a piece if he's in a negative headspace because he feels what's put into it lives in it. Funding for this story provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund.